The random or rand function in C actually isn't random. And if you've used it, there is a high likelihood that you've probably used it wrong. On top of that, here I've written this piece of C code and it, all it does is generate a random number. And when I run it one time, I get this number. But when I run it a second time, I get that same number again. So how do we write code in C that uses rand that is safe? But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to use it correctly in this video. For those of you that don't know, an RNG or a random number generator is a system that is used to produce numbers that are truly random. In computing, there are two kinds of randomness. We have true randomness and pseudo randomness. True randomness are things that are actually random in nature. Atmospheric noise, voltage electrical signals, the noise around those signals, the position of an electron in an atom. All these things are naturally random. They're random in nature. The opposite is true for things that are pseudo random. Pseudo random number generators are generators that are made by humans that produce numbers that didn't get derived from a natural entropy source. There are ways to do this securely and insecurely. One of the ways, and we'll determine if it's secure or insecure here in this video, is the libc random number generator. libc RNG is a linear congruential generator. What that actually boils down to in glibc is this equation here. Not feeling so random now, is it? That equation is derived from this equation for linear generators. The equation is x of n plus one equals a times x of n plus c mod m. Now the seed or state value is x of zero in this situation. X of zero sets the state of the RNG and allows us to choose new numbers as the RNG moves forward. Well, the first thing we have to do is specify a seed to the RNG, but there's a catch. What is the value we use for our state? If we need a random state to seed our random number generator, how do we start the randomness? We can experiment and start by using a constant number as our seed to our RNG and see if that fixes our problem. Unfortunately, by using a static number as our RNG state seed, we are in the same predicament where we get the same number twice. Now, fortunately, we do have another option. We don't have a RNG to seed our random state with srand or seed rand, but we can actually use time to seed our RNG. It's not cryptographically secure, but we can start out and see if that actually gets the ball rolling on getting us some random numbers. By seeding our RNG with time, we're able to actually get the RNG to produce semi-random values. The problem with this, if we are able to predict the time that is used to seed the RNG, then we're able to predict all the random values. To get us even finer granularity on our RNG, instead of using the second time, which is what the time value gets us, we can use the nanosecond time, which gets us a semi-random value as a function of the CPU clock, use the nanosecond time to seed our RNG, and then from there we have a fairly secure random number generator. Again, these are not cryptographically secure. Please don't go use these to implement some kind of cryptography or you know, encryption algorithm. By seeding the RNG with the nanosecond time, I'm able to produce values that are extremely random. There's no way to predict what the seed is, and as a result, there's no way to predict what the values later on in the RNG chain look like. Now, don't go and get too excited, okay? Because we're not through the woods yet. This algorithm is not actually cryptographically secure. The primary reason for this is the algorithm under the hood that is doing the random number generating can be reversed and arguably predicted. So if you want to create random numbers in your C program, what you need to do is use a cryptographically secure algorithm. The one that comes to mind when programming in C is the use of open SSLs random number generator. By using a library like OpenSSL that uses safe algorithms under the hood, we don't have to worry about any implementations of LCGs or states or anything like that. We can just ask the number generator for random numbers and it will return one or zero if those numbers are cryptographically secure or not based on how much entropy it can find in your system. So there you have it. All because your code has a function that is called random doesn't necessarily mean that that function actually is random. And even if it was, if those random numbers are cryptographically secure. That being said, use libraries that claim to be cryptographically secure and your code will be safe from there. After that, go watch this video that YouTube thinks you will find just as enjoyable where you'll learn something equally as cool. Just, just, just click, dude, it's right, it's right there. Go.